All right, so in this problem here, we are solving um, where we have a curve on a racetrack of radius 70 meters, and it's banked at a 15 degree angle. At what speed can a car take this curve without assistance from friction? All right, so we have banked curve. All right, so that reminds me of a triangle. Um, and our car is on this banked curve. I'm going to kind of list things what we know over here to the right, or to the left, sorry. We have a radius of 70 meters, um, and our angle is 15 degrees, and that's the angle theta here in my diagram. Um, and we want to know the speed it takes, right? And since we, we're going to use uh, forces to solve this problem, since we know that mass times acceleration becomes mv squared over r for an object in uniform circular motion, which is what assume we'll assume our motion is here. Um, so kind of looking at this here, we don't want any friction in our problem. So the only forces we have are the normal force acting perpendicular to our surface and the gravitational force, which is acting straight down. Um, now, since we want to sum the forces, um, we want to make sure that one of our directions, one of our axes is in the direction of acceleration, um, which is a key point in this problem here. So looking at this, this um, object moving, here I'm kind of assuming, let's say it's moving into this page and then back out. So it's kind of moving in a circle like this, where it's on a banked curve like the whole time, in theory, if it went a full circle. All right, so the center of its motion, its circular motion, perhaps is here. Right, so this radius here is 70 meters. So when we decide to call a certain direction positive, it's accelerating straight to the right. So we are forced to call straight to the right a positive direction. We'll say that's positive x. Um, therefore, when we deal with the y direction, that has to be perpendicular to the x. That means either I have to call straight up or straight down positive y. So I'm just going to call straight up positive y. It doesn't matter. Um, so let's see how this affects our problem. So when we sum our forces, sum our forces in the x, that's going to be mass times acceleration in the x, which is mv squared over r. Right? That's useful. Well, now one thing we have to worry about is mass. And now we notice in our problem, mass is not given to us. So we're going to cross our fingers and hope it cancels out. Um, so this is mass times acceleration, mv squared over r, and that's going to be the sum of our forces. Um, so we need to sum our forces in our x direction. Well, looking at this here, none of our forces are acting just only in the x. Um, actually, the force of gravity acts straight in our y, so none of that is acting in our x direction. But our normal force here um, is acting off at an angle, so we have to break up our normal force into x and y components. All right, so we've got our right triangle here. So this angle is 90 degrees. This is our normal force vector. Um, this is our normal force in the y direction. This piece here is our normal force in the x. Those are the component vectors of this force. Okay. So um, if we think about it a little bit, right, this angle here is theta. Um, the way I like to look at this is if I imagine this being a flat surface, then our normal force is pointing straight up. Right? If we angle that up slightly, it's this angle here that's changing from our straight up location to slightly to the right. So that's our angle theta. That's kind of a quick way to think about or to figure out what angle is theta, if it's this angle or that one. Um, this kind of picturing going from an unbanked surface to banked surface, which angle is changing. So that angle is theta. So if we want, if we end up needing to, we can say that our normal force in the y direction, well, that's going to be our normal force times the cosine of theta based on our right triangle. And our normal force in the x is going to be um, normal force times the sine of theta. All right, so going back here, sum of forces in the x. Well, the only um, x direction vector we have is the x component of our normal force. All right, so this is going to be our normal force in the x, right, which we said is going to be our normal force times sine of theta. All right, so what's important here for us is mv squared over r is equal to normal force times sine theta. Well, we know our angle, so that's fine. We're hoping mass is going to cancel out. Radius we have. Velocity is what we're solving for. I should say speed. Um, so the only other thing is normal force here, and we're going to have to solve for normal force some other way. All right, so just be careful. Normal force here is not equal to the weight. 
right? Those, these forces here are not equal since we are on a banked surface, an angled surface. Our y component of our normal force is gonna be equal to the weight, right? We see that from our y direction. So our sum of the forces in the y direction is gonna be equal to zero since we're not accelerating that way. We're only accelerating in the direction, in, the, in our circular path, right? We're not accelerating up or down off of the road, so to speak. So if we sum our forces in the y direction, that's equal to zero. So that tells us our normal force in the y is equal to our gravitational force. I'm gonna rewrite that as just mg. Normal force in the y, we said, was fn cosine theta. So fn cosine theta is equal to mg. So we can rewrite this in expression for our normal force. That's gonna be mg divided by cosine theta. So this expression here is a little bit different, our normal force, um, than the expression we're used to having, but that's okay. The math told us this is true. Um, so now that I have an expression for my normal force, I can take this and plug it in up here. So when I do that, I have that mv squared over r is equal to my normal force, so mg divided by cosine theta times sine of theta. Right, so I can rearrange this and solve. My mass cancels out. Sine divided by cosine gives me tangent. So basically, I have v squared over r is equal to g tangent theta. So solving for v, we have v is equal to the square root of g r tan theta. And when we plug in our knowns, I believe we get something about 14 meters per second, if I remember correctly. Right, so this bank surface allows us to move at a f speed of 14 meters per second without slipping. So even if this was you know, super slick ice, no friction at all, we, s we are still able to make this turn because we are at an angled surface. So this is the reason why um, if you're watching some sort of a race car race, maybe NASCAR or something, um, they are able to move faster along the curves because the curves are very, uh, are very banked.